Hey everyone, Dave here. Today we are going to be taking a look at Dragon Boats of the Four Seas, published by Maple Games, designed by Michael Schacht. Now this is a prototype version of the game, so it gives you an idea of what it's going to look like, but it will not represent the final components that come in this game. The game is currently on Kickstarter right now, it's fully funded, and they are working through some stretch goals, so this game will be coming out to you. Uh, especially if you're a backer, but should hit retail channels in the future as well. So, in this game, we are going to uh, be representatives of different houses in Zhangguo, and I've got a couple of the players set up off to the side. And over the course of the game, we are going to be sending our house members out to different areas on this board to uh, settle and become farmers, to reclaim some old farmland, to regain glory. And then also, we can send them up into the mountains to gain wisdom. Now, if we look at this board, uh, there's a thematic tie to the title. We have four seas that surround these different islands. So we get the different names. So we have, uh, and they all have different names that are in the book. So it gives a little bit more of a thematic element. And we have a central island that is surrounded by four other islands. And each of these represent the different resources that are in the game. So we have gold. Down here is cinnabar, over this way is jade, we have tea, and we have leather up at the top. Doesn't mean anything specific with uh, what's going on on the board, just that's what those, uh, those islands are going to represent. Now, this game is going to be centered around bidding and uh, set collection, and so right in the center is going to be where our bidding is going to take place and that's going to be a really important element in this game because it's going to determine uh, turn order and resolving a few things so that's going to be really really key so let's take a look at uh, the game a little bit closer i'm going to zoom in on the board and we will see the uh, there is a spot up at the top where you see a bunch of tiles right here on this main island these are called wisdom tiles they have been randomly mixed up and placed on different spaces on the board. So there's delineated right here is a spot. And over the course of the game, players can voyage up into the mountains, leave their house members there to gain wisdom. And this is where players will be able to um, gain tiles that are going to give them permanent bonuses throughout the game or also some uh, end game scoring opportunities. Now, each of the different islands, we'll look at the ones up at the top, have these different farm hexes that have been placed out. Now these have all been randomly mixed up and placed onto different what they call land spaces on the board. And there's also a road that uh, players are going to be traveling along in order to settle their house members and have them become farmers. Now this is going to be important because over the course of the game, players are going to want to have farmers next to each other to score points at the end of the game. Now, they're going to be getting to the different islands from the main island on these different boats. Now, these are prototype boats. They are going to actually be a three-dimensional boat. And this particular piece that you see is called a topper that will sit inside and it's going to have some valuable information on it. First of all, you see the outlined rectangular spaces. Those are going to be spaces for our house members to actually board the boat. At the front of the boat is going to have a couple of resources that are there. And those are essentially the offerings that players are going to have to turn in in order to be able to board the boat prior to its sailing. The center space has gives you a one a resource discount. So it's kind of like the cheap seat, you're along for the ride, but it does give you, a, does give you a, a break. It's like a discount ticket. And then finally, the information that's at the back, on here it's upside down, but it says 54 BPM. That is the speed of the boat, and that's going to be important when uh, resolving as boats sail the order in which they go, if there are multiple boats going to sail. And then finally, there's little marks. I'll show you another one closer up that uh, actually has, well, it's not a little blurry. Uh, there's two little meeples on there. That's going to show you that there's going to be two uh, people required to be on there prior to the boat sailing. So a little bit like the game Emotep. I see a lot of inspiration from that game in this one. 
So, um, as we set up the game, we have uh, scattered about all of these different farm hex tiles. They've been randomly placed, so each game is going to be different. Also, with the wisdom tiles, they have been mixed up and randomly placed, so each game is going to have a little bit of a different feel, so that's going to offer replayability options in this game. There are also some bonus cards that are going to be out in the game, and they are going to uh, give you uh, either different bonuses or different things that are going to affect scoring or um, interacting with other players. So, uh, one other thing that we have is a round tracker down at the bottom of the game, and this is going to keep track of how long the game is going to run, which is going to be either four or six rounds, depending upon if you're playing a long or short game. And at the beginning of the game, uh, each player is going to take one of their bidding discs and they're going to place them on these different squares. They could be on the same ones if they want to. And they're going to take the respective resources. So if we look at down here, um, we'll look at the number four. I'm going to start off with three random offering tiles that will be drawn from a bag. The offering tiles are the different resources, the ones that I showed you that you're going to need to get onto the different boats and also to be able to go up into the mountains. And I'm going to explain that more a little bit later on. We're also going to start off with money. This would give us four coins. And each player has a money track on their player board right in the center to be able to keep track of how much money they have. So uh, you're going to have a varying amount of starting money uh, based upon where you place it in this particular uh, round tracker. And uh, I'll talk about that more briefly in a, just a moment. And, uh, and then also you're going to get food, which you're going to need for traveling, and then also treasure cards, which are going to allow you to do different things. Now, the important thing at setup, and this is one of the first challenges that players are going to have to, uh, to face and weigh the options is, where are they going to want to place their disc on here? Now, um, each player is going to have a total of four bidding discs to have use, to use during the game, but one of them we are going to place on here, and depending upon where we place them, that is the, the start of that round, we will get our, get our bidding disc back, so we'll have four. So you may uh, decide to go here, sacrifice taking a lot less on the resources here at the second round, but the second round, you're going to be able to get your bidding disc back, and you will actually have one more bidding opportunity than your opponents. And when we get into the bidding phase, you'll understand why. But, so one of the things that you're going to have to do is realize, okay, do I want to have more bidding power early on in the game? Or do I maybe want to have more resources up front and try to see how long I can go playing a little shorthanded on bidding more towards the end of the game? So that's going to be one of the things that we're going to face at setup. So um, just for the sake of demonstration purposes, I'm just going to place these in random locations. I have it set up for... We'll do this for four players, and so each of the players will take their respective resources, and I will come back and show you what that looks like. So I went ahead and um, I'm going to go sh show you what each of the players have. One note, the game lasts normally six rounds. If you were to want to play a shorter game, you would actually play only four rounds, and you would remove these two bidding cards and shrink the board up. So you would use cards numbers 1, 4, 5, and 6 to play a, a shorter game, which is good if you want to get a feel for the game, but I uh, think that the longer game is actually going to give you uh, better results in seeing how the game fully uh, reveals itself. Anyways, so the blue player and the pink player each are going to start off with one food and five, uh, four money. So I moved up on the money track, and then they each have two randomly drawn resources. Now this one, he's got a Cinnabar, and then also has a, a tile to use for a bonus card. You could turn that in and take one of the two bonus cards that are revealed out in the center, or one off the top. Now these are going to give you uh, different um, things. For example, this one, the pig one, counts as one extra pig farm. Well, this is going to be important because you're going to try to, if he takes this, going to want to try and collect some sets of pig farms 
to try and uh, get some more points. And there are pig farms scattered around the board, but it seems like um, if we go that route, there's, there's a couple of them over on this side and one up at the top up here and then finally there's one down at the bottom of the board over there the other one is going to allow you to choose any two different items so we have either taking a treasure card a random resource a coin or a food now i didn't talk about the food or the treasure cards and this is going to be important because uh we, each of those players did start off with one food when it comes time for your house members to start traveling on these different islands or up into the mountains, they have a restricted movement of three spaces, uh, but you can spend food and move additional spaces, so it will give you more energy for the journey, if you will. So back to our players, the um, purple player has um, a food card, a treasure card, three randomly drawn resources so if they wanted to they could turn in this particular one at the top there for a treasure card and treasure cards are good for uh, you can use them later on to trade in for bonus cards or you can use them as offerings for um, going up into the mountains and then they also have a, a T and a jade and the blue player over on the side over here has Oh, we already talked about the blue player. The orange player decided to put his card last. Now this, um, we end up with more money. We have five money, we have three resources, we have one treasure card, one food, and we have one bonus card. Now this particular bonus card says, this is uh, for soy, and it's going to give me one additional point for every soy tile that I have. Now the one to three means that they, you can collect them up into sets of threes and the way that they score is they multiply themselves. So if you have one, one you're gonna score one point. If you have two of them, you're gonna score four points. Those are two points a piece. If you have three, you're gonna get nine points or three points a piece. Well, just giving an additional point per soy tile is going to be important. Now, instantly, when you put this out telegraphing like hey i'm gonna want soy farms and there happens to be a whole bunch down in this red island so this is primarily where this player is going to want to try to get their house members down there to settle to become farmers so you can see that there's some strategies that are going to be apparent with these bonus cards so once we've got the game all set up <clears throat> we're going to be uh, ready to go and we randomly determine who the start player is and so we will just say that uh, blue is the starting player. And what they're going to do now is we're going to enter the first phase, which is called the bidding phase. And we are going to use our bidding discs and we are going to place them on these different spaces on the board. We have five of them and each of them have resources on them. And then the last space allows us to do some exchanging of items and uh, trading in to get bonus cards. Now the way that this is going to work is that player plays um, places a disc on here. Uh, they are placing a bid and if this was the only one that was on there, uh, when we resolve the bidding phase, we go into the purchasing phase, they would be able to pay buy one of those resources for one coin. If another player placed one on top, now the cost for the first resource is going to be two coins and orange would have first bid first dibs on that so because uh, it's going to determine player order player order who is on top so um, if we have uh, a bunch of bidding that's going on which i'm going to go ahead and set up and show you how this is going to be resolved but each player is going to place a bid on there so the strategy is okay do, you know i have to look at what the different uh, boats are on the board available, what are the resources that I'm going to need to get on them, or what can I pull off to go up into the mountains if I want to gain wisdom. So that's going to be what the thought process is. Also, you're going to be kind of keeping an eye on your opponents, what they're looking for. You may want to uh, draw the price up because when we go to resolve this at the end, when we go when we get to the purchasing phase, if you decide you don't want to buy something, you can just take your disc off as a coin. So you do have like a little bit of an element of bluffing. Like you have no intention of really wanting to buy something, but you can't. But uh, you can drive the price up. 
So when we go to the bidding phase, we can either place a bidding disc there or on our own personal boards, we have two private action spaces where we could place a bidding disc and we would immediately get two coins. So it's a way for us to generate income because money is very, very tight in this game. So we only can work with uh, six coins at a time. So we're going to have to make sure that we have enough income for us to be able to do different things. So let's, uh, let me just simulate, uh, we'll go through a, a bidding phase. So right now, uh, Blue is the first player. They decided that they wanted to bid on that particular space because uh, they have tea and they have uh, leather. And so they would uh, really, really be interested in getting um, some more some more resources maybe like a jade for the future they already have the leather and the tea to be able to board uh, a boat to sail over on the one side so purple has uh, they have a jade and a tea already in their um, in their pocket so they're looking at this uh, maybe they decide you know what I'd really like to get sailing over here I'm gonna bid on top Maybe they've got their eye looking at this gold over here. Plus, they maybe don't want uh, red to get additional resources. The uh, pink player, over they have four money. They already have a jade and they have a, I mean, sorry, they have a cinnabar and a bonus card. They're going to decide to go over and bid on this space. Maybe they're looking at the leather. So they're hoping maybe nobody else is going to want to go there and uh, maybe they'll pick it up for cheap. Orange already has, uh, a, they can already board one of the other their boats on there, but uh, maybe they're, they're just kind of looking at, uh, you know, they're going to want to go for the, to get on the soy farm. So they're looking at uh, these two boats over here. They already have leather. Uh, they're going to need some tea, so they're going to bid on this one also. They really want tea, so they're going to place on top. And we're going to go around, the, the uh, blue player is going to bid again. Maybe they decide, you know what, I'm just going to maybe trade in. Um, maybe they're going to plan on trying to get something cheap and trade it in to get something different along the way. So they're going to place a bidding disc there. Purple's going to go down in this spot here. Pink decides they want to try and maybe pick up some food to be able to travel a little bit further on. And the blue player is like, um, you know what? I think I know what orange is up to. I'm going to place one on there, drive that price up. Purple is going to be uh, perfectly content with wanting to pick up some resources by themselves. Pink says, you know what, sure, I'm going to maybe... Pink doesn't have a treasure card, but maybe they're just going to go over here and try and get another food. So we've gone through. Um, the orange player needs to uh, bid. Actually, he missed a bid before, so we'll just slide him underneath there. that. And finally, this one, we will do that. So we have gone through, and this would be the bidding phase. Players are going to go through, and they're going to bid. Now, we're going to resolve these uh, one by one, starting with the first place. So the first thing that we did, this was called the bidding phase. Now we're going to go in the uh, payment phase. So we start resolving them from left to right. So over on the first spot here on the one, um, it's going to be purple's turn. Purple has a choice. They can buy one resource of their choice for uh, two coins if they wanted to, or if they decide not to, they can pull their coin off, pull their bidding disc off, and gain one coin. Well, right now they have four money, and they're looking at some other resources. But uh, looking at the purple, they already have uh, jade and uh, tea. They'd really like to have this gold. So they're like, yeah, I'm going to uh, buy this gold for two. So they'll pull their bidding disc off and they're going to take this and they're going to put it over on their player board or in front of their player board. So we already have three resources that we started off with. We put this one over here. We bring our bidding disc back and we spend two money. So we move down on the money track. Back to the first player, or back to the blue player now in the first spot. They have a choice. Okay, do they want to buy a resource for uh, one? And I think that they are going to possibly be interested. We already have. Um, we'll look for something in the future. And yeah, we'll spend one money to pick up this jade. And they bring their bidding disc through. And uh, so... 
we, we're on our way to getting some things. We go back to the blue. Blue is like, do I want to spend three for another resource? I only have three, the blue player only has three money left. They say, no, we're going to pull this off and we will gain one money. So the orange player is kind of relieved going, man, I was going to be, um, I didn't buy something I had my eye on, eye on some things out there. Wanted to make sure that I had some, um, you know, maybe wanted to get some resources for later on. Hopefully get on a, get on a spot. Uh, orange player's like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to buy. I'm going to spend two and take this leather. So they'll pull this leather off, spend two money, and so they reduce money on their money track. And um, pull their disc off. And uh, pink player has the opportunity to buy something for one. And uh, they're looking at... Some things going, you know what, I only have a, a Cinnabar right now, and I have opportunities to get tea. I'm not sure there's only one boat out there that has tea on it right now, but maybe I decide, you know what, for one, I'll go cheap. I'll spend one money and take one of these tea, and they'll place it over in front of themselves. Now, let me backtrack here and, show, um, and talk about things. As we're buying stuff, players have the opportunity uh, during their turn to deploy one of their farmers. Now, um, if you go early on, you're kind of telegraphing what you're interested in. And, um, you know, right now, you may not want to tip your hat. Somebody may want to be um, quite obvious about what they're doing. Maybe not, but um, they have the opportunity to do that. You can try to do it early, but uh, when, you, when you board a ship early, players have, will get an idea of what your intentions are. And they may choose to not board that ship because there's a minimum amount of house members that need to be on there before it sails. If the orange player decided like, hey, I'm going to jump on this boat right away and uh, be ready to go. They know that there's a lot of soy down here. He's got a bonus card that's going to give him points for soy. And they haven't really stated with these bonus cards if they're going to be revealed or not, if you keep them hidden. But... At the, for the sake of this demonstration, we'll show that it is it's revealed. Because if it was a if it was a face up card and they took it, you'd know you'd kind of telegraphing what's going on. Like, hey, this is something that I'm interested in. So maybe right now we want to hold off on that. So we keep going through these spaces. We go back to pink. Pink is like uh, three money. I only have three in my bank. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, pull off here, gain a coin. But what I'm going to do is uh, I'm really interested in um, getting some more resources or doing something different. Um, I have a different strategy. I'm going to go ahead and turn in any three offering tokens. And so he's actually going to give up a bonus card, spending any of these three, and sending one of, their, uh, one of his house members to either the A or the B to go up into the mountains. And so we're going to look and see... Um, you know what? We're going to go this route right here on the B. And then we'll take those resource tokens and we're going to put them back into a bag with all the other random uh, resource tokens. So he has sent his first farmer out. The orange player has an opportunity to get some food, pick up something for two. And he's going to be like, no, I'm good. I want to take a coin. I want to be sitting good with money. But I am going to go ahead and spend... Um, a resource to get onto uh, a boat and I'm going to spend my uh, leather and I'm going to get on to the boat over here sending a farmer into the middle space so, you know I will be willing to take a risk on this to have one of my guys going out I get a one discount one resource discount on this one so instead of having to spend for leather and tea, I'm only spending my leather. And so uh, we have to wait for another person to go on that boat. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. We go back to the pink player. The pink player has an opportunity to spend one. He was That's what he was hoping for. He'll spend one money to pick up a food because food's going to be important for traveling. So we spend one money, bring our bidding disc back over. Purple person is, has an opportunity. It's going to cost him. Um, he's the only one there. So he can spend two if he wants to. Pick up some gold. Um, pick up some tea. We're looking around seeing what's available on the board. Well, he's already got gold and jade to be able to board a boat here. 
might want to pick up another gold to get on another boat somewhere else. So he says, you know, the first thing he's going to do is say, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take one off to gain a coin. And now I have another opportunity to buy something for one coin. Yeah, I'll spend that one coin and I will go ahead and I will take one of these golds. And he says, while I'm at it, I'm going to uh, spend some of my offerings and I'm going to send out a couple of my house members. So the first thing that he's going to do is spend a gold and we'll put that back in the bag and send one of his farmers to the cheap seat over here because it requires cinnabar and gold. Now the second one, um, we're going to go ahead and spend our jade and our gold and we are going to spend another guy over this way. And he's going to sit in the back of the boat. Now, being in the back of the boat is important because you're the one who steers the boat. When it's time for that boat to sail, the person who's steering is going to determine which direction the boat is going to go. It's either going to go to the, this island or this island when this sails. So, you're in control. The middle seat's the cheap seat. You're kind of along for the ride, but you get a break. And if you're in the front seat, when you're off, you're the first one to unload from the boat. So, you have first... Uh, first dibs on some spots. So we have a few we have um, a few spots that are out there on the board already ready to go. Now we get down to this other spot and um, we have an action. We want to spend two. I could uh, do either of these two actions or both. So the first thing is I can uh, if I want to spend two money I can trade in a resource an offering to take a random offering and a food and then I can also trade a treasure card in for a bonus card well the first thing that I'm gonna do is like yes I will go ahead and spend two money so I'll go on my money track down and pull my disc off and I'm gonna go ahead and trade in I just had a treasure card disc put that in the bag I'm gonna draw a random treasure out of the bag so we'll see what we get and we draw a bonus card which you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn that in right now. And I think, um, no, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to um, keep that. I'm gonna spend, no, I will send this, spend this in and take a bonus card and I will take one random one off the top. So this is extra coin. This is now a permanent thing that each time that I uh, step on a coin space, I'm going to get an extra coin. So, uh, and we'll talk about that as we're traveling here in a moment. And then also I will go ahead and I will spend my treasure card to get another bonus card, which is now going to give me a permanent, ooh, extra move. So now my, far, my uh, house members will have an extra move each round four instead of three. So this is going to be really, really good for the orange player. So he already has um, three bonus cards. Something that he's going to want to look at doing is gathering up resources and maybe wanting to get up in the mountains and have his eye on that particular spot because for each bonus card you have, you're going to score a point at the end of the game. So that's going to be one of the strategies. But right now... He needs to uh, get out on the boat and try to uh, settle somewhere. So we will go ahead and spend the cinnabar and the leather to send a farmer out. And, or he's actually a house member, he will become a farmer. And we are going to go into the front seat right here on that one for that one, that one sails. Because he wants to get out. And uh, either way, whichever island he goes to, he's going to have uh, some, some uh, leverage there. And finally, the uh, blue player has the opportunity to spend some money. Uh, and he's going to decide, do I want to spend one money? Do I want it to uh, get additional food, trade in resources? So the answer is no. He's just going to pull it off and take a coin. And so we'll go up to five money. Now, uh, we have gone through this complete bidding phase, so the next thing that we're going to do is the exploration phase. And, oh, actually, I'm sorry, the blue player decided he wanted to spend his leather and tea to get on this boat uh, because he wants to uh, go somewhere. He decides, you know what, I want to be first off, so we're going to go over there. Now, 
what we're going to do on this exploration phase is we're going to resolve. Are any of the boats ready to sail? And the answer is yes. This one is ready to sail. It has two, two uh, house members on there. And uh, also we will have to resolve the mountains first. So the first thing the pink player is going to do is they get to move up to three spaces. So they will move along the road and as they pass over spaces they are going to uh, gain um, whatever they pass over. Now one of the things the pink player has got his eye on, he wants a little bit of flexibility, is maybe to get that additional move. So what he's going to do is go one, two, three. So he's going to lay him flat there and this pink player now is going to take this hex plus one move and place it in front of him on his by his player board showing that he now has a plus one move uh, it's a permanent ability just like the other player has a bonus card so um, we're gonna do that and then also he passed over a um, random resource and a treasure card so he will take those respective things and put them into his um, area so he drew a treasure card uh, token offering toil and we'll also take a treasure card and put that over in front of him as well. So, we have done that. And then also now we have an opportunity for this boat to sail. Now, the, uh, since there's really nobody in the back seat, whoever is the furthest back is going to give this uh, boat an opportunity to sail. And so the orange player is going to be like, yeah, I need to get soy. I want to go over here. And so we're going to sail this way. Now this is going to be important because uh, as we are unloading our farmers, we're going to want to try the, to get them in different areas where they are adjacent because at the end of the game we're going to score points for clusters of our, of our farmers. And so uh, for each one, like if it's, if it's only one by himself, it's only one point. If you have two next to each other, it's going to be four. Three is going to give you nine points and so on. But since we have arrived here, since the orange player did, the blue player is the first one who is going to be um, unloading. And uh, they are going to decide, uh, you know something, maybe later on I might go for that pig farm. Um, I could also go for this, uh, this soy farm. And because I know that the orange player is going to want to go there. So they may decide to, they can move up to three spaces and they must end their movement on one of these spaces. If they can't, then they end up going back to their reserve. Um, if they don't have enough food, you know, they maybe can go a little further. So, but he can go one, two, and then that would be a third space. One, two, three. If he spends his food, he could go out this way, maybe go after the rice. But he's going to decide, you know what, I kind of know the orange player is going to want to go after the soy. We're going to try to rain on his parade. So we're going to go one, two, and take this now in front of them. So they actually have a soy. The orange player is like, ah, why did you have to do that? Uh, but they're going to use their movement and go one, two, three. And so um, they actually can move four if they wanted to. We're going to only move three, grab this one along the way for the set. And uh, since we went over a food space, we will take a food and put that into their uh, supply. The other ones are not, the other boats now are not going to uh, sail because there's not enough people in there. But we're going to move on basically to the uh, cleanup phase. And what will happen is since this one is sailed, we will, this, this one will go away. Uh, you will return any of the dragon boats back and to put a new topper on top. If we don't have the dragon boats, we'll just grab a new topper. So this one is uh, 34 beats per minute. We'll put this one out. It requires a jade and a T to get on there. So we'll look around and see maybe if somebody was lucky enough to have uh, some things. And uh, we're going to then, um, we are able to store up to three resources on our player board. There's a spot for them. We'll still go over to the pink player because this is going to apply here. We have two offering tiles that we can use. We have a treasure one or a food one. They could send those in and if they wanted to, um, you could trade them in. The other thing that we can do is we could start selling off uh, food, food and um, 
treasure cards for additional money because money is really, really tight in this game. But everybody is sitting at a relatively decent uh, amount of money. And then what we're going to end up doing is uh, refilling each of these markets with resources. So fill them back up right here. Here's one here, here, and here, and here. All the bidding discs are back. No one we forgot to take off before. And um, if they were in, we already have all of this stuff going on. And so what will happen is we will flip over this card to show that's the end of the round. We start, we move on to the next round. If there happened to be a player, if they had their bidding disc on there at the start of that, when we flip this over, then um, actually when we get to it, you will get that back. So uh, it's going to be good. Uh, you know, the later on in the game, you're going to be able to get your bidding discs back. So, but that's essentially how you play the game. Now what's going to happen is at the end of the game, once we've gone through all of these things, we're going to score for different sets. And like I said, they multiply against themselves. So this would be like, right now this would be one point, but if I had two of them, this would give me four points and, um, and so on and so forth. Now the vegetable ones are lower. They go in sets of three. When you have the, the meat, the fish, and the pork, they're going to be sets in four, so they're a little bit more valuable. There's not as many of them out there. Once we do that, uh, we're going to resolve any end game wisdom tiles. For example, this one, if somebody had it, for each treasure card that they had left in their reserve at the end of the game, they're going to get two points. Otherwise, they're worthless. Same thing with those ones for food. Um, you're going to get bonuses for money. And uh, then you're going to resolve your areas where you have the farmers in close proximity to each other in clusters. So, and then whoever has the most points wins. Now, some impressions on this game. We played this. I really like it with four players. Um, I really like the competition for the bidding. The bidding reminds me of a Stefan Feld game called the Speicherstad that has a progressive, like, the more things that are on there, the more expensive it is. And then if you decide you don't want it, you pull your marker off and the price goes down. So you can use that as a, a, a bluffing thing. Maybe, um, you know, we go through here and they're getting all scared thinking they're going to get it. Or you put your thing on there if somebody else is interested. If it's earlier on in the bidding, they're going to have to pay more if they really, really want it. So I like the bidding aspect. There's some cool player interactions with some of these bonus cards. They allow you to do different things. For example, you can uh, jump ship and you're switching meeples on different boats. So you have a little bit more of that player interaction. And again, I think that goes back to uh, kind of an influence from the game Imhotep, which reminds me of this, the minimum amount of players that are going to go and then the ship sailing. And then you have some of that kind of... Uh, not really mean, but uh, there's some nasty player interaction that allows you to mess with each other's uh, plans, which I like that too, because you you know when you're playing a game, you have to be able to adapt. If everything is all like programmed in your mind and nothing really throws a wrench in your works, then the game doesn't really become fun. You're just executing actions. Um, the storage of resources, it really makes it hard to do a lot on this game, so you're gonna have to make every move count because uh, well, at the end, you're only holding forward three, so, I mean, if you hold on to resources, you may have one weak round. The next one, you may be able to buy a bunch of things. You have a lot more flexibility, so there's going to be a little bit of this, like a surge. Like, you may have a really, really good round where you're able to send out a lot of your house members, and then the next turn, you may not be able to do so much because your resources that you have in storage have been, uh, have been depleted. And I think that the bonus cards... Uh, give you some interesting strategies. Like I said, the orange player has their mind set on uh, some the, the soy farms because they're going to get extra points for each one of those. So um, they're going to be looking at that. Uh, I think the game is well designed. Um, and I think that the weight of this game is good that even a family can enjoy this one. Um, seasoned gamers, I think, will enjoy it for um, you know a few plays. But um, I'm not sure. Um, I know that they've got some other, there's some other content, there's expansions and things that are planned for this. I think they come out in the deluxe edition of the game. That gives the game, there's a little bit more going on, um, which I think would be neat. There's some resource tokens that have two resources on there, so maybe you have more flexibility. But uh, 
I think that might keep them more engaged, a little bit more planning, but you're really trying to do things, seems like a one at a time. So, um, but I think overall, I mean, it's a casual game. It doesn't have a very, very long playing time. You have lots of replayability in this game um, because of the different layouts on the board, the different bonus cards that you're going to have. Uh, I like, like I said, I like the bidding mechanic on here. So, and I also like this right here. You start with more resources, but you're going to play shorthanded. So there's lots of different opportunities in this game, and hopefully that uh, you got a sense of uh, some of the strategies, some things to think about when you're in the game. I was just wanted to show you like a sample round of how the game goes. You know, and over the course of the game, you're going to start seeing things unfolding, like maybe the orange player was able to manage to get a couple of farms over here. You know, and so the game, he's going to score some points there, you know, see how everything had, sh had uh, shaken out. But uh, overall, I think the game plays really quick. I like it at the higher player counts. Um, I, I know that if you're playing with lower player counts, what ha like for example, if you're only playing a three-player game, let's say Blue wasn't in there, there would be bidding discs. These are permanently placed out there, so things are going to get more expensive. If you're playing with uh, two players, this first one is real expensive. So that's how it would look like if you're playing with uh, less players and, um, you know, you, and that you have the flexibility too to play the shorter game, which uh, I think um, I prefer the longer game, to be honest with you. It gives you more chance to really uh, meet some goals on some of these uh, bonus cards. But anyways, that's, uh, this is it for Dragon Boat to the Four Seas. I will have a link in the video description to take you to the Kickstarter page if this is something that you look like uh, that you're interested in backing. All right, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.